Now, using the 20 millimeter drill guide is very simple. Uh, the drill is going to go in in one of two places, and each of these places have got this uh, bronze uh, bushing. Now, bear in mind, this drill is specially made, uh, and it has a precision ground shaft, so that it fits absolutely perfectly in whichever of these two bronze bushes is being used. Now, we do recommend that you put a tiny spot of oil, such as three and one, on the shaft of this uh, before you start using it. And the way this works is very simple. I'll put it into the first position, like so, and there's a three millimeter hole just there. If I move this forward, and now I take two of the three millimeter guide pins, and I line these up such that it's gonna go through the hole in the guide block and then through into a hole in the bench. That's that one in place and that's that one in place. And you can check this uh, to make sure it's in by giving it a wiggle. And now because there's potential for you to exert force uh, forward and backwards on this, I still recommend that you clamp whenever possible. After a while, you may feel you don't need that, but uh, for the time being, I recommend it. And I use an extractor uh, because that just keeps the overall uh, dust and debris uh, level down in the workshop. And I must say, this is an example of where the removable chuck on the Festal drills is so useful. And there we have a nice clean hole. Now you will need a little bit of practice. If you push too hard, you'll get some breakout here. Uh, and if you go too uh, slowly, uh, but you've got the drill spinning rapidly, uh, you may get a bit of burning. So you've just got to judge the speed perfectly for the type of material you're using. Now do watch, sometimes you get that little disc that appears at the bottom of Forster bits when you're at the final part of the cut. Uh, and if that's present on the end of the drill bit before you start the new hole, uh, just pull it off. So it's not always going to be possible to put a clamp on. And so there will be times when you'll just have to go very carefully without the clamp. Well, using the three millimeter pins in the original position, I've cut the ones that you see here. Uh, and the ones that are missing, I'm going to put a bit of red on because uh, these we're going to use a different method to cut these holes. There's that one. Uh, there's this one here. There's this one here. And this one there. So you can now see the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten holes that I couldn't cut uh, using the three millimeter pins because by then I'd made a 20 millimeter hole where the three millimeter pin should go. So what we do is very simple. We take the drill bit out of that position and put it into the second position. And we now use the small bench dogs from Lee Valley uh, to do our lining up. And setting this up is very simple. I'm gonna use uh, one of those dogs in each of those two holes there. I'm then going to put the jig over the top of those holes, lower it down carefully, make sure it's firmly seated, and then away I go. And that was really, really simple. And I just move along to do the next ones.
So that's my track saw cutting station complete now and it would normally have its two path dogs there and there and then I would put the smaller bench dogs from Veritas there and there. I'd have my piece of wood to be cut against there and my track will go here. And that's it. And if I'm cutting something which is uh, narrower, I can move it closer to me so I'm not leaning over quite so much. And I think that's absolutely perfect. And I'm future-proofed here because I've left some of these three millimeter holes uh, ready so that if I needed to put some more holes down here, I can put the path sticks across and continue the process just as you've seen me do now. I've turned this upside down now and I'm trying to show uh, that there's no appreciable breakout. There's little tiny bits here and there, but nothing of any uh, great importance. And there was no sacrificial backing piece underneath this at any stage. Right, now it's time to test this. I've got the same piece of wood I used earlier. I've put my first name there. Um, my saws all connected up. Track saws against the path dogs. The works against the smaller dogs. And here we go. I'll take this out straight away. I hope you can see that that's a perfect cut. Well, that's it. That's the UJK Path Guide system. It's absolutely brilliant for making custom workbench tops custom track saw cutting stations and if you've got it in the back of your van and you suddenly realize you need to do a lot of square cutting you can make yourself up a very quick impromptu cutting station in a matter of minutes thank you very much for watching take care bye bye